Welcome everybody to the Art of Podcasting, New York Music Month, Building Beats. I'm Marcus. Um, I'm from Building Beats and uh, we are a nonprofit organization uh, based in New York City, providing music and podcasting education to youth also in New York and now uh, Los Angeles as of this past fall. So the Art of Podcasting is a collaboration with New York Music Month Extended Play. It's an initiative of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment and through the New York Music Month Extended Play Initiative, we've been offering a lot of free music production uh, workshops and podcasting workshops through May. So we still have a number of more workshops to go through. Um, those of you that wanna check out what other workshops we have going on, they, oh, let me just drop these links in the chat. You can visit our website and you can visit um, Explore the Beat is more catering to music production. And then the art of podcasting is uh, podcasting. We've already had two workshops in the past. We had one with uh, Jules Dodson on interviewing uh, two weeks ago. And then um, we had the first one just on basic, you know, podcasting 101 with Nina uh, Pollock. So those are archived on our blog. You check those out and also on our YouTube channel. Um, so today we've got a workshop on getting good tape. And during this workshop, we'll get the rundown of how to record, um, including how to choose the right microphone, audio recorder, levels, recording out in the field, and lots, lots more. And we, today we've got Pierre. Um, and Pierre is a senior podcast producer at um, The Recount, and he's worked on podcasts for DigiDay, Slate Bustle, and a bunch more. Um, thank you, Pierre, for joining us today. Sure thing. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so, Pierre, the floor is yours. Um, he'll be walking us through this. Take it away, Pierre. Thank sure. You. Thanks again, Marcus, and thanks, Sarah, and uh, thanks to everyone else at Building Beats who, who's making this happen. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining just to, just to watch. I know that you could be anywhere in the world right now. There's nothing, nothing stopping you from doing that. So, you've decided to be on this Zoom call to learn a little bit more about how to record some podcasts from the comfort of your own home which is where um, you're, you probably are right now. So um, so yes, getting good tape. And here we have some actual physical old, I'm assuming magnetic tape in, in, our, in our logo for, um, for the session. Um, so, you know, this, this series is kind of, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, presumably the kind of podcast that's kind of a conversation. You know, perhaps you're interested in talking to one person about uh, whatever the topic of your podcast is. It's an interview podcast, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, maybe two-on-one -on -one interview, maybe you're interviewing more than one person. But either way, you want to be recording yourself and them in, in a certain degree of quality, the highest you can get. And, and you know, make things comfortable in the moment too while, while you're talking to them. So there are a whole bunch of solutions for that and they existed before the pandemic. But of course, now they're seeing a whole bunch uh, more attention so, um, and business. So here's, here's the big thing, you know, uh, there's a little bit of a how it used to be thing, which was this. Um, this person on the left is of course the esteemed guest of some kind of NPR report or podcast interview. And the person on the right is this person called a tape sinker. Um, they were paid a certain amount to uh, travel to this person's location and kind of hold that mic up to their mouth as they were speaking. And uh, the idea was to get kind of a local high quality recording. Maybe the reporter couldn't go here themselves. Maybe this guest couldn't travel out of, you know, the, the confines of their city to go uh, do the interview. And so they were like, you know what, we can just kind of talk to you. We'll record the, uh, you know, the phone interview, of course, but we'll also have someone recording you in high quality here with, with a nice field microphone that, you, that this person's holding. Um, but of course, uh, now we're kind of more uh, this kind of life. Um, everyone, everyone's at home, uh, including these two creators of, uh, of these daily podcasts. There's so many daily news podcasts these days, <clears throat> and these people have to produce those from home. This person on the right, uh, in his closet, this person on the left, apparently, uh, you know, records, you know, from her bedroom as well for, uh, for one of the crooked podcasts by crooked media. Right. So, um, without further ado, Let's get into uh, some of the, you know, some of the resources that you could use. And you know, here's where I kind of plug certain certain businesses. I mean, I don't really have any relationship with them, but there's one called Riverside. It's pretty new. Uh, I was reading an interview. They launched at kind of the right time because obviously the pandemic happened, but they were, they, you know, they were planning on on launching anyway. 
And um, there's you know, a screenshot of me. I was just showing how it works. It's this thing, you know, you, you, you would sign up for it. You'd pay them a certain amount per month <clears throat> and you'd be able to create, you know, calendar invites and copy a link over to someone and send it. Um, Riverside's pretty handy in a lot of ways. You know, you can see on the right that it specifically says what microphone I'm using. And that's my MacBook Pro microphone, nothing fancy. And that's what you're hearing me through right now, of course. But, um, you know, if you had a fancier microphone, you could select it there. And if your host had a, uh, your guest had a fancy microphone, you could select it there too. And then you could hit start recording and, and make it happen. You know, whatever of these services you use, you'll obviously want to troubleshoot it with maybe a friend who's willing to spend a bit of time just saying hello to you um, over, over video. You know, it's basically like a Skype call. It's getting recorded in high quality, right? So this one's called Riverside. You can go check it out at riverside.fm. This one's called Remotely. Um, I'm using Remotely these days at work. It works well enough. It has maybe fewer fancy features than, than Riverside, it seems, but it also looks to be more reliable. And I'll take reliability over fancy features, you know, just about any day, because I want what I record to actually get recorded. And the cool thing with this, with both of these, Riverside and Remotely, is that once you're finished recording something, you have the audio file. Your guest doesn't have to send you anything at all. They're done. As long as, um, you know, they have to like hang out in the, in the room for a minute or two for their audio to finish uploading, and that's it. Um, and then of course, beyond remotely, we also have Zoom itself, which we're all talking over now. And if you use Zoom, I would just advise you to do this, open the preferences by hitting command comma or, you know, file preferences, go to recording and check that second box from the top. You see that one record a separate audio file for each participant. Oh man, you really want to check that box because, um, having that is, is a luxury, right? You have a separate audio file for you. And your guest, that means if you're laughing obnoxiously while they're saying something very important, you can just in post processing, you can delete yourself laughing or you move it around, whatever. Right. So there's that. Um, Zoom works just fine. It's, I don't know, also not, you know, purpose built for podcasting the way that uh, Riverside and remotely are. But, but Zoom is Zoom and everyone has it uh, apparently. And no one's, you know, going to be like, I'm hey, Zoom. I'm not sure how that works. So. Yeah, and again, you just want to test it um, always. You know, all these have a record button and, you know, kind of goes from there. And of course with Zoom, another advantage is that people can actually use telephones to call in, right? Um, here's kind of a list of, of those, those dial numbers, but you can do your own research. But the point is if someone doesn't have a computer or access to it, they can still call you over Zoom. You can still record it that way, which is nice. So here's the thing. Um, back to this image of a tape sinker. These days, this person on the right probably could not be paid enough money to, to risk sitting in front of a stranger without a mask. Um, I'm thinking way closer than six feet apart on this, right? So that doesn't really work anymore. Um, so what we wanna do now, what people are doing a lot in podcast world and radio world, even NPR, and they were doing this before the pandemic too, was something where they make their own guests say things themselves. So this person on the left, instead of speaking into a, a microphone, they would perhaps use their smartphone, which many people have, and they would record themselves. So they would both be holding a landline phone or, you know, speaking into a computer, and they'd be recording themselves like this. Uh, and I've, I've linked, you know, I've sent Marcus, and I think he'll share it around, a link to this video by Aspen Public Radio. Super useful. You can see that that video was made seven years ago. So indeed, this is way before the pandemic, right? And um, it's a neat little video you can send to guests being like, hey, um, I'm hoping you could record yourself locally and then send me your audio file and I will pair them up and it'll sound great, right? That's the whole idea. And this, um, you know, some people are curious and you can, if they are curious, you say, yeah, in the business, we call this a tape sync. And what I always tell people is that it's a, a very low tech, but a very elegant solution, right? Because you have, you'll have two pieces of tape, two recordings resulting from that. You'll have the one from their actual landline. It's gonna sound like a voicemail, which sounds fine. And I, I, hopefully they're gonna have something that sounds a lot better. Um, Anyway, there's that video. So, and it's funny, people will, your guests will often ask you, they'll be like, oh, so am I recording this with my iPhone? Is, am, I, am I doing that as a backup? And then that's when I always tell people, well, really the landline is the backup. I want the high quality stuff. This is gonna be my primary. So if you could please turn off, you know, a fan, close the windows. If you have a dog or a cat, if they could be in another room, that would be great. 
Oh, it's all about being, you know, polite and uh, polite, but persistent, you know, about, about sound quality, because um, whatever you can record in higher quality is going to save you a, a bunch of headaches, right, in post. And when I say in post, I think you know what I'm talking about. It's editing an interview, you know, in Pro Tools or Audition, something that kind of looks like a, a fancier version of GarageBand, right? Um, this is something I send ahead of time to people. Uh, this radio podcast person, Andrew Norton, made this graphic. And um, yeah, I, I email this to all of my guests ahead of uh, me interviewing them, you know, or of my host that I'm working with interviewing them. It's kind of a, you know, really clear idea of like how they're going to use the phone. I want, you know, I'm telling them I want them to record themselves uh, in as quiet a room as they can. And then, um, you know, put themselves in airplane mode so that if they get a phone call, it's not going to get interrupted which is a bummer. And then uh, when they're done, hit stop, send it, blah, blah, blah. You can see a step four, by the way, I cut it out here. There is a step four usually, but I kind of didn't like it. It was, it showed a photo of someone holding the, the phone up to their, up to their, their mouth and speaking into it that way. And eh, you know, the Aspen radio suggests something different, which is uh, to put it on that stack of books over there. That's their suggestion. You know, um, here's my iPhone in fact. And over Zoom, I'll often do this. I'll spend five, 10, maybe even 15 minutes talking to a guest before we record. And I'll say, yeah, please do join us from a quiet room. Uh, turn the fan off if you could, thank you so much. And go to voice memos, go to airplane mode. And then if you don't mind, kind of put the phone on a surface near you with the home button facing you, because that is the part that's recording. Lay it down flat, don't touch it while you speak, because it might rustle on the other end. Hit record and, and, then, and then we're going, right? Um, and go back to this. And then here, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm being a little bit in the weeds, but here's an email that I send to people before I interview them or I have my host interview them, right? Because uh, when you're producing, you, you know, it's a kind of like in a lot of work, you're often saying the same thing to different people over and over again. So I, yeah, once I have that smart email that's polite and, and detailed, I'm going to copy paste that thing to everyone, right? They don't need, they don't need to know that I'm, that I'm not typing this thing out for the first time every time, right? Saving my, saving my fingers and, and my time. So, and I'm, again, I'm happy to send this around. You can kind of use it. It's, you know, I put that image in there and I explain to them because here's the thing, like, you know, if someone knows in advance that you want to do this whole tape sync thing, then they can maybe plan ahead and be like, oh, okay, I need to be in a quiet room. Uh, that maybe changes when I'm willing to speak to this person, all of that. And that's of course going to help, right? And um, yeah, you know, if your guest offers to do certain things that would lead to higher quality, I would say accept, say thanks and accept when they're saying, oh, I could go to this other room that's quieter. Um, what do you think? Well, some producers would say, eh, it's fine. We could just go, but no, not me. I'm gonna go, oh yes, thank you so much. I, I, if we have time, then yeah, let's do it. You know, if they, if you even have a, a lot of time and they say, well, tomorrow there's no one with a lawnmower outside. Uh, maybe we could do this tomorrow then. Well, you know, it's kind of between me and the host and whoever I'm working with, like, does tomorrow work? Then, then yeah, let's do it tomorrow. We're not going to, we're not going to sacrifice um, quality for, you know, doing things like super, super fast. Right. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Marcus and Sarah, I'm not sure, by the way, I'm happy, happy to field any questions at all or, uh, or to keep going. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat otherwise, uh, or ask them out if you prefer that way. Um, otherwise, Pierre will continue on let me know don't be shy it's all good mm -hmm. um, yeah i don't see any coming in but uh no worries. okay yeah until then um this is uh this website called transom uh by the way transom is where i found that photo also of someone holding that microphone right transom is a great website um is it dot com is it dot org i forget dot org, i think dot, dot org. org thank yeah. thank you marcus Yes, it's it's fantastic. It's a resource for people like you who are curious about podcasting. It'll have all kinds of guides and how tos on on everything, you know, for for podcasts and radio. So so check it out. It also includes um, from a, a few years ago this uh, this part of the tape sync thing, which is hey, if there's anything you could turn off, that would be sweet. Um, is a dog barking? Is a refrigerator buzzing? A clock ticking? Is there a lot of traffic noise? All that stuff, totally worth addressing, right? Right. There you go. Some people even go go the next, you know, the extra mile and have people unplug the fridge. And it says here, you know, if you want to do that, you can leave your keys in the fridge so that you you know, you're not going to leave without reminding your guest to uh, to replug. Although of course, you know, these days we're not doing that so much. So it's up to them to make sure that their uh, all their milk doesn't doesn't go bad. Um, Two questions, Pierre. Yeah, Marcus. Um, somebody yeah. asked 
Uh, can you do this directly with Audacity and an interface on loop? Sure. Okay. So here's the thing I would say. Uh, one, I mean, I'll, I'll be super honest, right? I'm totally not an engineer. I'm a podcast person. And we're actually going to talk about what I mean by that difference uh, in, in kind of the next section. Um, as for using the, the software called Loopback and, and record, yeah, any, other, any way that you could record the Skype call, of course, it's going to be, yes, I suppose, just one file as opposed to two separate ones, which is too bad unless you're, unless you're totally cool with that. But um, it is nice to have that control. You know, what if one person's voice was a lot quieter than the other? Well, then no problem. You have the two different, two separate tracks. You can just boost them. And, that, and that's, that's that, right? Super easy. Um, but um, I would test whatever it is that you're curious about, about doing. Uh, the thing is too, though, compared to Remotely and, and Riverside, which I, I suppose are the paid options that I've listed, uh, Zoom is, is, seems to be free up until uh, you know, 40 minutes of use in, in one call. And even then you can just leave and reconnect and record some more. Uh, and you can even pause recording on Zoom, which, oh man, Riverside and, and, uh, and uh, Remotely don't have that. You have to stop a recording, start a new one, and you get one whole new file per person who's speaking. Um, so, but, uh, and to, to just to go into a bit what I was saying earlier, I was saying, what if you, you know, if you were just recording yourself then, and the reason I say that is because this whole tape syncing thing, well, if you're a, a big part of the interview, then, hey, you want to be tape syncing yourself too, right? Um, that's, that's the kind of the idea. So what you would do maybe is, uh, indeed, some crappy stuff, you would have, um, you know, maybe your, your microphone, this is an SM58 by Shore. It's a hundred bucks. It is, you know, an industry stalwart. It has a reputation for like never breaking. Apparently you can drop it on the street and roll over it with a truck and it will still work. Um, and people do it for music too. It's, it's, it's a great microphone. It's, it's entry level, but also, you know, solid throughout. Um, so if you had a, something like a microphone yourself, you'd probably want to, um, to record that too. Um, and you could certainly do that straight into Audacity if you have a hard, piece of hardware audio interface, right? But um, but then you know you'd still I, I don't know if you would if you'd then be getting well you would be getting just your voice if you were wearing headphones that's that's a big thing with tape syncs in fact and I have it listed here in this uh, let's see in the email I send right I say for this to work best you'd have to join the call with a computer and headphones that's a third line in my email that I send to everyone why the headphones. Well, the headphones are, are for this reason. It's not for me, right? It's because I don't want their voice leaving my computer or I don't want my voice leaving their computer and going into the room they're in and into their iPhone or their microphone that they're using to record themselves locally, right? I want just them speaking into that, that microphone. So the headphones really aren't for their sake of hearing me better. They're just so that you know my voice doesn't pollute the air around them. And then same thing, if you were recording yourself, into a, a microphone at home while speaking to someone um, in order for that to be a really clean take of just you speaking. Um, you don't wanna wear headphones and plug those into the computer or whatever so that you're stopping that sound from going right into your microphone, right? Cause that way if you're speaking and again, if they laugh and it leaves your, your laptop speakers which aren't very high, you know, it's not great quality, right? And their laugh goes into your mic while you're speaking, eh, not great. Whereas if you have two discrete, by which I mean separate sound files, that's like a luxury. It's a great thing to be playing with as a, as a sound person in, in you know, an audacity. You just have two tracks. I would give, I would give whatever you like, you know, a shot. And I would think that for the free option, I would probably give Zoom a shot. It's got that, that box you can just check that says record separate, you know. Um, Thank you. Last, uh, yeah, sure. And the last thing on that, actually. So don't forget that what you would get at that point is you would get two little, you know, sound files from Zoom. And then ideally you would have one tape sync from your guest and one tape sync from you that you recorded locally. And you would line those up with the waveforms that you got in Zoom. And then you'd be like, cool. And then you would mute the tracks that the Zoom is on. You would just use the iPhone track and your mic track. And then, you know, then you'd be in business to start editing. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I don't, don't have that much focus on, on post-processing kind of in this, in this um, session because we're talking about getting good tape, right? But that's a whole other thing as well. Thanks. Um, yeah, there was another question. When downloading a Zoom interview, where are the separate audio files? Oh, sure. <laughs> Let's see here. For me, you can see that they go to this folder, store my recordings at, you see that at the top? And you can choose whatever you want. And actually that's, 
I'm using, I was using a computer on this work computer. I don't really do many Zoom recording calls. I use, I use Riverside and remotely. Um, but on my other one where I was doing that, I didn't have that folder set to documents. I had it set to desktop because I don't know about you, but whenever I download anything, I want it to be right there and I can drag it around to a folder after work, you know, but yeah, the point is right there. It's your choice. Store my recordings at and, and you tell it where you want those files. Moving right along. Here's the transom. Again, transom's great. I would check it out. Now, um, this, this next part of, uh, of this program is getting good tape. And it's really funny that um, I'm assuming that it was Marcus that kind of decided on the name of this session. I'm not sure. But um, <laughs> I underlined, you know, tape there. Or I framed it in these red lines because it's a really funny thing that we, uh, we it's a holdover of the, the era when this was actual, you know, magnetic tape. Of course, now it's not. It's just, you know, ones and zeros. So it's a wave or an MP3 on your on your computer, right? But we still use the term tape, and uh, it's, in, in fact, people at NPR do too, right? Um, here's uh, an excerpt from this great book uh, called Sound Reporting. Um, Jonathan Kern he talks to like dozens, I think maybe more than a hundred, I forget, uh, but journalists at NPR about how they do everything you know, how they, how they think of story ideas, how they approach people that they've never met before, how they, how they record them, what they ask them, what kind of microphones they use, everything. Um, and uh, here, you know, this is a really great little page that talks about the fact that tape is, is so important. Um, and then, you know, this highlighted, highlighted bit that I have from back when I read the book the first time um, <clears throat> says, you know, it's a tenant of public radio reporting that the best pieces rely on strong actualities and sound those are just quotes that you've recorded from someone that you've spoken with, right? So really, you know, getting like really expressive bits from people is, is, is the biggest thing. Um, so, you know, it all depends on what it is that you want to do. I would assume that most people who are on this call right now, uh, that they would want to do one-on-one um, -on -one conversation, that kind of podcast, where, uh, you know, it's a podcast about movies and you talk to people you know, or directors or anything like that about movies. That's just a, a more direct approach, right? You have, in the end, you're going to have two sound files of roughly equal length. They'll be perfectly of the equal length in the case of Zoom or Riverside or remotely. And you can pair them up, do some editing, some processing, and kind of that, that's it, right? But, um, but maybe not. Maybe you're more into the kind of storytelling podcast where you're going to write a script, and then you're going to bring certain little bits of sound that you've recorded in, and you're going to layer that with music. Um, it's, you know, that's the kind of thing that you've heard on, you know, This American Life or Radio Lab or uh, a lot of NPR podcasts or all kinds of narrative podcasts is usually what we call them, a narrative podcast that tells a story. And of course, I'll be honest, you know, it's a lot more work that goes into that. I mean, well, I don't want to generalize too much. Plenty of work can go into a conversational interview podcast as well. Plenty of preparation. Um, but, uh, you know, the narrative podcast is going to take a, a lot of planning as well and, and uh, you know, script writing and conceptualization and all that. In fact, um, let me go ahead and play a bit of uh, this great, great podcast that I would recommend called How Sound. Uh, it's by Transom, that, that, you know, that, that site where we're just checking out. And uh, I mean, you can imagine what it's about, right? How Sound, it's about how people put radio together. So um, there's this great episode from a few months ago from last year about, uh, I mean, look at that. Because of COVID-19, reporters are scrambling to figure out how to report from home given social distance guidelines, right? So this isn't really all about how to record technically, but it's about how to get great kind of um, cool moments to be captured. Let's say, um, let's say you're interviewing someone about uh, a lawnmower that they invented. I'm, I'm making stuff up, right? Maybe your podcast is about inventions. Maybe it's about lawn care or landscaping. Uh, maybe it's about talking to people to how, how what they're doing now that they're bored because they're at home because of the pandemic, right? Could be any of those things, but you're talking to this person about why they invented this cool lawnmower. So what do you think you want to do in, in a podcast episode that's about that? Well, anyone who works at NPR is going to tell you, we want to hear that lawnmower, right? We don't just want to talk about it. I want to hear this person pull the lawnmower out of their garage and, you know, roll it down the driveway and then onto the lawn and then maybe do some mowing if that's not too loud, right? Of course you want to hear all that stuff. So, um, but how do you do that in the middle of, of a pandemic? Um, well, I'm going to have you listen to uh, two bits of sound. Um, 
I'm not sure what, uh, yes, let's see. Just to test, Marcus and, and Sarah, you can tell me, can you still hear this? Yep, can hear it. Great, great, great. In that case, I'm going to play a bit of this podcast episode a few minutes in. And uh, the host has just asked, you know, someone about um, a reporter about how, how they do things and how they, how they record great sound of people doing things in their homes. I think we're going to listen to just a couple minutes of this and, uh, and then I'll, and I'll be back. I rely a lot on being in the room with someone and, and, you know, looking at them face to face and just being there, being present. Um, and without that, you really do have to to work harder to get them to open up um, and be more themselves and and you know be a little bit more emotional on the phone. Okay, so what if you don't have video to pull from? How do you get scene tape then? Well, that very question came to mind when I heard a short scene in a story about giving birth at hospitals full of COVID-19 patients. I was doing the story and thinking, this is going to be so flat if it's just a bunch of talking head doctors talking about this incredibly intense emotional experience, which is having a baby. Sasha Pfeiffer is a reporter for NPR. For the story, she interviewed a pregnant mom over the phone. As I was interviewing this woman who was about a week away from her due date, I thought, if I were with her in person, what would I be doing to make this come alive and to make the listener feel like they were there? And what I probably would have done is said, can you show me the nursery you set up? And when I went to the nursery, I would have had her sort of describe the art and the furniture. So that's what I did. At Lauren and Daniel Harrigus's house in Sarasota, Florida, they've been doing some redecorating. This was our old office and now it's our nursery. So we have our changing table and our crib little dresser and all the cute art we could find laying around. <laughs> Here's how that recording went down technically. Basically, Sasha asked the woman to stay on the line, but grab another phone, turn on the voice memo app and start recording. So she's walking around the house with two phones. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I've done this many times and it works really well. Um, did you give her any other instructions like did you have her check the battery life on the phone or how much space there was to record audio on the phone i didn't have her check battery life i assumed that they would be keeping a general eye on that on their own i did say to them if we talk for much more than 20 minutes i'm going to have you stop recording and start a new file so that it doesn't get so large that your email system has trouble sending it and then I really say to them, pretend I'm next to you, you know, point out to me, describe to me. I, I try to make it feel like we're together in the room. There was another case where I was talking to a new mom and I was thinking, okay, well, I probably want to see the baby. And I said to her, can you tell me what your baby looks like? So she actually crept into the little bedroom where the crib or the bassinet was. And you could hear her turn a lamp on by turning a little chain. <laughs> Here she is. She's asleep. Oh, no, she's not asleep. Oh, <laughs> she spit up a little bit. Once the interviews were over, the interviewees emailed the audio files to Sasha. It's pretty simple. Now, in case something goes wrong, Sasha records the call, too. She has all the cables and such at home to capture a phone call directly to a field recorder, but she says it's too cumbersome. Instead, Sasha uses an app named Call Recorder. It kind of works like a conference call. You call someone, then you connect to a third number, and it records, and then I'm left with an audio file on my phone after I'm done, and then I can upload that audio file or move it onto a hard drive. Laura Herberg, the reporter from Detroit. All right. So uh, I started that, that, you know, that hitting play a little too early, but you got to the point where she was talking about how does someone report on people giving birth in, in you know, in hospitals, uh, despite the fear of COVID um, and how they're preparing for that at home and all of that. And uh, yeah, the, the big thing that they did there was say, well, I'd love for you to talk to me on the phone, but uh, while you're at it, if you could kind of show me around your home and how you're preparing and, and have another phone running with voice memos on, and pretend I'm there and describe things. Um, and of course, they were talking to them on the phone the whole time, so they could kind of ask for them to describe things. Uh, yeah, and then they got great sound that way, you know, um, stuff that you wouldn't be able to get in just a simple phone call with someone just talking about stuff, right? So, um, yeah, this is basically a way of doing field reporting um, from from home a little bit. Uh, this episode, which I would listen to if I were you, and how sound has all kinds of great stuff about radio. They also say, you know, well, well, would you want to tell people that are listening to the podcast that, like, oh, just so you know, this person did. 
they were the ones recording this sound. It wasn't me recording it. Yeah, you might want to do that. They say that, that you know, it's a good thing to disclose. I mean, it depends on, on what kind of, you know, journalistic kind of approach you're, you're going for. But um, in, in my work, you know, it's, it's journalism and, and certainly I wouldn't want to do something like that. Um, the next thing I want to have you listen to, and this is the, the next and the last thing, is a few minutes um, from the end of, uh, of a podcast that I, that, you know, we published last October that I worked on. Um, the podcast is called, uh, it's called Unfair. It was about the skin lightening industry, which, um, you know, is a, a, a big industry. There are all kinds of products that, that would do this. Um, and of course, it's, it's an industry that's been criticized a whole bunch uh, it's already it already been criticized, but um, but last year in the midst of um, well after after the murder of George George Floyd and and all these uh, protests and all these examinations of of different industries, uh, this is an industry that got criticized a whole bunch and they made some changes, but not all that many. Um, but anyway, we spoke to someone, um, a woman who's uh, whose great grandmother, I believe, great grandmother, had uh, founded a company in the early twentieth century. And uh, it was a su successful black business, but also this company, um, after her great grandmother's death, they started selling something called Tanoff, which was a skin lightening product. And um, we interviewed this person over Zoom. They were at home, and we we asked them a couple questions for them to describe certain physical objects, because it turns out that this person uh, also had a tin of Tanoff at home, just as a, a piece of you know an artifact from the past. And uh, here we go. I'll, I'll go ahead and play this. I have a wide range of vintage Madam Walker products. We're back in Alelia Bundle's home, and she's showing us over Zoom her collection of products from the company her great great grandmother founded in 1906. And I also have in this box a sample of Tanoff. But this little tin is about the size of a little bit, about a 50, 50 cent piece. And it has, it is so old that I can't open it, but you can hear me trying to twist it off, but it just won't, it won't budge. In a way, it's not the best metaphor because Alelia isn't trying to keep a lid on this part of history. This is something that I sort of put at the back of the drawer. It is. <laughs> I really hate this thing, but I think it is a part of history and it is something that I should recognize that was sold by the Walker Company, but not during Madam Walker's lifetime. History has to have all of the blemishes. What, one of the great gifts that I received from my mother when I was first starting to do research and when I went to Indianapolis during Christmas uh, one of my last conversations with her, I said, you know, I'm starting to find out that Madam Walker's not perfect. Now, of course, nobody's perfect. She had a divorce. There were other things, and these weren't really scandalous, but I was finding things that were beyond the myth. And I said, so, Mommy, what do I do about that? And she said, tell the truth, baby. It's all right to tell the truth. <laughs> There you go. So, you know, we use exactly the methods described in how sound in order to get that kind of scene and uh, a bit of that sound. If you've been wearing headphones and maybe listening in a, in a different environment, maybe hopefully you would have heard some of that sound stuff, which I definitely boosted the levels on. I wanted people to hear that of her opening this drawer and trying to get this lid open and it wasn't working. But um, yeah, that made, that made it very much worth it. Um, Pierre, we have another question from Royalty Mia. Uh, do you have any advice on recording your own podcast at home? Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, let's see. That that's kind of what you know what this session is all about, and a very specific part of it, which is recording it. So if if um, I forget the, the person's name who asked this, if they might have a more specific question, or, or Marcus or Sarah, if you wouldn't mind maybe narrowing that question down to something we haven't talked about already in the past. Yeah, royalty. Years. If you want to like ask a more, if you want to ask your question. Um, or maybe specify, I think, like, do you, like, maybe term, in terms of, like, the, like, what kind of room you should be in, or, like, how to get, oh, recording in the closet setup, what's a good record, okay, so Natalie is asking what's a good recording in the closet setup, I cool. think that picture, you had a picture of somebody in their closet, yeah, right, here's, cool. here they are, well, first of all, 
if you are willing to record in the closet, uh, bless you. You've already you've already done you've already done a lot. You are going to get so much such better quality recording uh, in a closet compared to a normal room. Uh, why is that? It's because of reverberation echo, right? You know, almost worse than having uh, uh, an air conditioner going is being in a big room with no carpets because that, that that bouncing of the sound sound bounces off of everything, right? Um, it's just it leads to something that's not as pleasant to listen to. Um, I was working with someone once, and well, you know, the host of that podcast, she she recorded everything in a closet. Uh, again, bless her, right? She was kind of you know probably sweating a bit by the end of that because she was spending quite a bit of time in there recording stuff. Um, when she, this was when she was recording the narration solo, not when she was recording interviews, you know, but she could have done that for interviews. I, I bet some of these hosts do too, but you know, someone else in the past that I've worked with had said, uh, oh, is it cool if I record in the bathroom? And I was like, oh my goodness, like, absolutely not. That's like, that's the worst place you could record. It's funny that people don't, you know, they're not really sure until you, until you kind of guide them through that. But yes, recording in the closet is great. Um, I would, uh, what I would do if I were you is first, I would maybe go check out this article in the New York times, you know, broadcasting from closets at home. You'll see some, a bunch more photos of people's setups, but also I would go check out transom. Um, I mean, tell you what, if we just, uh, do this really quick, if I do share again and I go with, uh, this and then I go there. The first transom article, look at that. Again, you're gonna get great tips. Look, they have this audio interface, it's the same one I have. And it's actually, hers is a bit of a newer version, so I'm jealous of that one. But yes, they have this is little foam cube with a USB microphone. I'm sorry, not a USB microphone, a normal microphone. Um, you'll get all kinds of tips on that. Under the, under the blanket, that's another way to do it. But uh, transom will, ha will have the answer for you on how to do that. Great thing to check out. Recording by freeway, any tips? <laughs> uh, Someone's asking, uh, recording yeah. by freeway, any tips? Ooh. Uh, and there's some consistent white noise. Again, too, what's a good setup for recording in a bedroom? Yeah, I think that link, I'll, I can repost that link that uh, Pierre just posted for those of you with all the tips. But. Mm -hmm. What I would say, by the way, about recording next to a freeway, uh, if you have to, uh, is that what you should do um, before and after the interview, you should go ahead and, and uh, record some of the white noise from your microphone of just you not speaking into it, just the, the, the mic recording the room and the sound that's around. And you should do this regardless of whether there's a freeway near you or not. But that way, it's going to capture a certain amount of, um, of white noise from the freeway. And you'll be able to use something like Audacity to, um, to make it learn what that sound is and try to remove it. Audacity, which is free. Uh, right, Audacity is kind of like GarageBand. It's it's a it's a doll, a digital audio workstation it's for post production, mostly. Um, we're not really getting too much into that, but it's free and it's good. It has a very good noise reducer. Where what you do is you highlight a second or less even, but you know you can highlight a moment of white noise, and then you can tell it, hey, that noise, I want you to reduce it, and it's really good at doing that. So you can do that with the highway noise. Um, but someone mentioned, a, you know, a shield, a mic shield. That's 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 good yeah. too. That's just like uh, in that transom thing, you know, kind of a box, basically a shield. So, what is the best microphone if you are recording yourself, USB or the other type that requires an adapter? Great question. Um, you know, if 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 you're a beginner, even if you're not, I would say you can go with what's comfortable. You can start off getting a USB mic. You know, I've heard that the the blue. Uh, the company Blue makes the, 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 I think the Yeti mic. No, the company Yeti makes the Blue mic. That's what it is. And apparently that's, you know, that one's great. It's certainly going to be better than you just, you know, speaking into Zoom and recording that way. Um, it's definitely going to be better than recording on your iPhone, right? But um, of course, if you get this kind of uh, mic instead, and Azure probably knows this, but um, I'm kind of going to kind of explaining your question to some people who might not be familiar. It's uh, right. A USB mic, of course, is going to plug into any computer via USB. Um, cause it's going to have, you know, this USB end, but of course, what if you have instead, a mic, uh, you know, a real studio microphone that on the other end doesn't have USB. And the reason it doesn't, I think is because of the amount of, of voltage or of power, right. Going through that mic. It's not just going to go into USB. Instead, it's going to have this, an XLR ending. 
It's a typical, typical microphone ending, right? So uh, how do you make this happen? Well, you do it through something called an interface, which, which Michael uh, has asked about. Um, mine, for what it's worth, I mean, this is not, you know, you don't need to, to think that this is the best one, but it's a focus right, just like the person over uh, at that transom article had. It's a focus right, uh, I think it's a 2i2, 2i4, means two in, four out. So you, you can put, you know, two microphones into this. Um, I rarely use it for that. I just put one microphone into it. I also, you know, for this interface, I also have this this um, this piano plugged into my computer, which is cool. That's that's a different kind of uh, side hustle, of course. But um, the interface, I mean, and that and the microphone, that's all just extra hardware. It's all a little bit higher budget, of course. But um, yeah, it's going to help. So that's what you want to do. I should say one more thing about that. Something that people are doing, I think, a lot more and more is um, not getting an audio interface and instead getting a microphone, sure, and an XLR cable that goes into it, plugging that right into a field recorder, right? Um, and just recording that way and onto an SD card. And they pop the SD card out, they pop it into their computer, they drag the sound file off. There's no problem doing that um, at all. You know, you just, you know, it's, it'd be a bit more cost effective than sure. And of course, the field recorder can be used for, for other things, um, like what that tape synchro was doing, you know, or recording people anywhere at all. Um, next, our next podcasting workshop will be on like post production and making your podcast sing with all kinds of sounds. And um, we've got Jeremy Bloom, um, who's uh, done a lot of podcasts and all kinds of audio um, voodoo, I would say. I don't know. They're they're a really powerful, awesome uh, sound designer. So um, I think, oh, and then, yeah, Pierre just dropped the WNYC show, Rookies. Yeah, it's Radio Rookies. <clears throat> it says, uh, since 1999, Radio Rookies has been conducting workshops across New York City to give young people the tools and training to tell their own stories. So I like this one, you know, that one and How Sound, which I shared, here's the specific episode of How Sound. Um, but anything of How Sound is gonna like, broaden your mind about the possibilities uh, about radio. Um, it's really good stuff. Cool. Any last questions? Otherwise, I think that's about it. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining today. Thank you, Pierre. Um, and mm -hmm. my pleasure. pleasure. Thanks for having me. This is the Art of Podcasting Workshops from Building Beats. Uh, we have a couple more um, through the spring. Thank you again, Pierre. Uh, thank you, everybody. And, Thanks, uh, all. Yeah, I'll see you next time.